Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and talk about, um, of course, Christopher Columbus's. Uh, we'll talk about him first with exploration, and then I'm going to, of course, follow that with. Uh, I will talk about Ferdinand Magellan uh, as well. His expedition. He was really, really famous um, with his um, expedition, which happened uh, in the early part of the 16th century. Then I will talk about also some minor explorers that I've got also as well. Uh, I guess we'll get to those. I hope, I hopefully, we'll. Which are the English and French explorers. Uh, later next week, I'll probably have a canvas quiz on exploration that I'll have probably likely on Tuesday, uh, which will be, looks like the 8th of September. So anyway, let's talk a little bit about Columbus. Uh, of course, you saw that little video that I just showed you about Columbus. Uh, of course, Christopher Columbus, we haven't really gone into much about him yet. We showed you that little video uh, about him. Um, and Columbus was Italian, Italian explorer. I think everybody knows that. Uh, probably because of Columbus Day uh, that happens every year, uh, every, I think, second Monday, I guess, in October, which, you know, is controversial now because uh, the fact that after Columbus came, a lot of the uh, Native Americans died because of the diseases that they brought over. And, um, of course, I think now they call it Indigenous Peoples Day. <laughs> it's one of the nicknames they call Columbus Day uh, as well. Uh, some of the Indians don't like Columbus uh, because of that. But, you know, if it wouldn't if, if it wouldn't have been him, it would have been somebody else. You know, it would have probably caused it. But um, the Columbus is uh, celebrated by a lot of the Italians today. That's why Columbus Day was created initially, uh, because of the fact that um, a lot of Italians wanted to create pride uh, in themselves and being Italian-Americans. And so that's why the popularity of Columbus Day took off, or at least for them. <clears throat> I guess it became a national holiday, you know, later. Um, now, Columbus had this idea as an explorer. He wanted to try to reach Asia uh, by going westward. He thought it was a shorter route rather than what the Portuguese were doing. The Portuguese were sailing around Africa to reach India, which Vasco da Gama had completed in 1498 later. But uh, Bartholomew Diaz had already reached the bottom of uh, Africa. So Columbus went to different countries. Uh, he went to Spain. He went to France. He went to England, uh, et cetera. Uh, I think he even went to Portugal. And uh, most of those other countries didn't really want to get involved, although England was very interested later uh, after, I think, Columbus went on his initial voyage. Uh, the country he would end up, you know, getting his support would be, of course, what we call Spain. Uh, of course, it's not really called Spain. Uh, at the time, uh, it was made up of a collection of uh, Spanish states or kingdoms that included uh, Castile and Aragon. That was the main ones. That would be later what we call the Kingdom of Spain or Spanish Empire uh, that would form. And it was ruled by two rulers. He had King Ferdinand II of Aragon, who you see right here. And then he also had his wife, who was Queen Isabel I of um, Castile. Uh, they were known as the so-called Catholic monarchs. You may have heard of that. And uh, Queen Isabella was the one that was very interested in the expeditions of Columbus. And so she's the one that actually financed the voyages. So it was actually a woman that, you know, decided that Columbus would take these voyages, of which there would eventually be four uh, explorations of Columbus <clears throat> to the West. Uh, the first of the four expeditions were actually called the Enterprise of the Indies. That's what they were actually called because his whole goal was to try and reach uh, what is the Indies. The Indies was a um, European nickname uh, for Asia and especially where the Spice Islands were, uh, where Pepper and all that came from, which was close to Indonesia. It's like a group of islands near Indonesia. <clears throat> so Spanish wanted to sail westward uh, to reach there. They thought that they could get there by sailing west, but Columbus was off by hundreds of miles, uh, thousands of miles. I think he thought that if he sailed westward, it would only be like three, 000, four thousand miles. And it was more like, I think, 11 to 12,000, maybe, or something like that. It's what it really would have been. Uh, eventually, uh, they gave Columbus um, several ships, of course, to sail with. Uh, those are 
Of course, I got a replica there. I did add some replicas of the ships, which are down here. Uh, the Nina and the Penta, those were, of course, two caravels that he sailed with. Nina meant the little child, I believe that's right, or little girl, little girl. Uh, and Penta meant painted. I think it was a painted ship. Uh, and uh, those two ships were actually commanded by these brothers uh, that went with Columbus. They were known as the Penzon brothers. You may have heard of the Penzon brothers, maybe. Martin and uh, Francisco and Vincent. Uh, they were three brothers. And uh, some claim that they were the real ones that found the New World and not Columbus. And, of course, the other ship he got was the Santa Maria. The Santa Maria was a Carac. A Carac is a type of larger caravel, a little bit bigger uh, than a than a caravel is. And that and the Santa Maria was actually um, uh, Columbus's flagship that he sailed on. Uh, Columbus called it not the Santa Maria, which meant the uh, Saint Mary, uh, is what it meant. But he called it the uh, La Capitana, uh, which I guess means the captain's ship. So, yeah, the Santa Maria, uh, you can see the Santa Maria is about 100 feet long, and in the other ones, well, they're probably about 70, 80 feet long. That's how long the Nina Pinta caravels probably were. So, Santa Maria is a little bit bigger uh, ship. Yeah, that's about it. 90 something men and boys. That's about how many people went on the first uh, expedition of Columbus. You would think a lot of people would want to go. Uh, <laughs> but a lot of people were scared about this voyage. They thought that they weren't going to come back. You know, there was still a lot of people that thought that the world was flat and all that. And they thought their ships would fall off the edge of the world. And they would never come back. And so, yeah, there's a lot of people that are scared uh, about the first voyage. But, you know, in the second voyage, when he went to the Americas, 1,200 men went, you know, way more ships. So, so after that, everybody wanted to go after he found land. So uh, you can see he left in August of 1492. Palo, Spain, where he left from, of course, in southern Spain. Now, I've got a map showing the route of Columbus. Uh, so you can see left here. He first sailed um, west, uh, really south, south uh, westerly course and reached the Canary Islands, uh, which the Spanish controlled off the coast of Africa. And then you can see from here he sailed westward uh, through the Atlantic. Took him about uh, two, two and a half months uh, to eventually cross uh, the Atlantic Ocean. And um, I think, but before they reached, you know, uh, the Bahamas, which is where they would first come ashore, as you saw in the video, uh, some of his men almost mutinied, almost got overthrown uh, and forced to go back to Spain. Uh, but um, the Penzon brothers, they think, were kind of vital with that and, and basically prevented the mutiny from happening. Uh, so there was also a thing where I think Columbus had uh, a, a given a, like a gold reward. I forget how much it was, but he said the first man to spot any kind of land would get like a gold reward. And uh, there was a guy on one of the ships, I believe it was the, was it the Penta? I thought it was the Penta was the ship, I believe it was. And his name was Rodrigo, I think his name was. Yeah, he was on the Penta. He was a lookout. He claimed he saw the land at 2 a.m. in the morning on October 12th, 1492. Uh, of course, a funny story about that. Columbus said he saw it first, and so he got the money instead. <laughs> so Columbus kind of ruthless with that. Um, so, uh, so, they, so they arrived, of course, in the um, Bahamas. Uh, the first island they came to was called San Salvador. That's the modern name that they call it today. Uh, it's had all kinds of names they've called it before. I think originally they called it Watling Island was a name uh, that some called it. And then uh, also um, I'll add a comment here. There was another name they had, which I'll put up here, which is uh, Guanahani was the Indian name or native name that they called it. That's what the natives called it. Native Americans called it the Guanahani, island of Guanahani, which they're not sure what the name meant uh, exactly. Uh, and, but that's what that's what Columbus wrote in his diary about the uh, expedition uh, to the, on the, when they discovered San Salvador. Uh, and um, 
the people that found it, you saw in the, they talked about the people in the video. They were called the Taino. Yeah, Taino. That's what they were called. Those are the natives that, of course, Columbus meets um, on that island. These were uh, indigenous peoples to, I think, the Americas that lived in a lot of the islands that were in that area close to Florida. And, uh, yeah, they were affected by the diseases and all that. And I think they say within, like, so many years they were wiped out afterwards. So that's one of the tragic things, you know, about um, – the explore the Europeans they they came afterwards you know all the natives that I think ninety percent of the uh, Native Americans died if you know about that in the Americas after after the Europeans came because mostly from disease like smallpox measles and and so on uh, from there you can see Columbus then also discovered some other areas he also found uh, besides the Bahamas he also discovered like Cuba uh, and also uh, what is um, Hispaniola? If you go to that map there, uh, those two areas. So Hispaniola is an area which is like over here. Uh, Haiti is over here. You got the Dominican Republic on this side. Then Cuba is over here. So he found Cuba first. And then on his way back, as he was going back towards Spain, he then would find, of course, Hispaniola uh, in this area right here. And he does lose one ship, uh, the Santa Maria. You may heard about the Santa Maria. It's shipwrecked off the northern coast of Haiti and close to December 1492. And he decided to take what was left of the uh, ship, and he built a fort out of it. And uh, it was uh, he, the fort, or I guess it was like kind of like a settlement that was there. Uh, it, was called, um, it was called La Navidad. It was like the first attempt at some kind of European settlement uh, by the Spanish when they got there. La Navidad means, of course, in Spanish, Christmas. You know, they, that's what they call Christmas, Christmas Day, I guess, when they established it. And he left some men there, and he sailed back to Spain, uh, came back, I think, in 1493. Uh, but when he went back on the second voyage to find out what happened to his men, they were all killed uh, by Native Americans. So the first actual Spanish settlement to try to attempt something there. The New World actually didn't work originally. Uh, later, they would have, um, if you know much about later, uh, Santo Domingo. I'll get to that. I'll mention a little bit about that, um, which was, if you know about Santo Domingo, that was a city that was founded by the Spanish in 1496, where the Dominican Republic is now their capital. And that would be founded by, you know, the Spanish under Columbus. And that was considered the first real modern city established in the New World uh, after, after the Spanish in, the, in Columbus came. So uh, Columbus would explore other parts of the mostly Caribbean. I don't know if you know much about that, but mostly the area that he would actually explore would be the Caribbean Sea area. That was the, um, he didn't really get, people think much about the Gulf of Mexico, but Columbus never got into the Gulf of Mexico. He only got really much into like the Caribbean Sea uh, between like, kind of like below Puerto Rico down here and then um, all the way to what is Central America. So like on his fourth voyage, uh, he discovered like the Eastern part of Central America like from Nicaragua down to like almost like Costa Rica, he may have explored. Uh, and then he also found a lot of the islands in the Caribbean. Like if you think about Jamaica, Grand Cayman Islands and Trinidad and uh, Barbados and just about every kind of island you could think of uh, in the Caribbean was found by him. Oh, why is it called Car Car Caribbean? They're named after a people called the Carib, C-A-R-I-B, who were Native Americans that lived in that area, uh, which he made contact with. And, of course, within like 50 years, they were all wiped out uh, by the Europeans. So that's one of the, like I said, they're, most of the Native Americans that are in that area that they just explore were wiped out within 50 years. So anyway, that's uh, enough about uh, Columbus. So that was basically what happened with Columbus's voyages right there. So he comes back from that voyage uh, and uh, the what happens after that uh, is the um, Spanish 
uh, and the Portuguese start dividing up all the land uh, between what they've discovered uh, at that point, the 1490s. And uh, the Catholic Church got involved. There was a pope named um, Pope Alexander VI was concerned that war was going to break out between Spain and Portugal over these new territories they found, two, two, new, two new areas they found uh, in the world. And so he had them draw up some kind of treaty between the two countries. And so they drew a line down the map of the world where Greenland is. It was like originally, I think, right here where that gold, that's where the church uh, originally drew it. And uh, a year later, they moved it over a little to the west. And uh, Portugal got all the land that they discovered, like in the old world, like in Africa initially. Then later it'll be like Asia, like in India, et cetera. Uh, over here. And then Spain got everything to the west of that line, like in the new in the new world. Like mentioned, it's going to be most of Latin America, but originally it was supposed to be all of the new world. Uh, however, uh, if you know about Portugal, Portugal came in and kind of snuck in there and stole Brazil uh, from the Spanish because of Pedro Cabral discovering it in 1500. Uh, and so um, the Spanish didn't really want to fight over that because they had all this other land. Uh, and so that's how they would divide things up between them. Now, other countries like in Europe didn't agree to this treaty. They didn't recognize it. And so later on, like in Europe, you got the French and the English are going to come in. They're going to try to colonize too in the Americas. Uh, and even the Dutch too uh, try to come in as well. Uh, let's talk about the aftermath also of, of course, Columbus. Now, um, one of the big aftermaths of Columbus is the so-called Columbian Exchange. I know you've heard about this before, but it's a new term that was invented in the 1970s. Uh, there was a man named um, Alfred W. Crosby uh, who wrote a book that was called that. It was called The Columbian Exchange. It was like a historical work that talked about the idea that Columbus's voyages to the New World had created this... Um, various consequences um, biologically, culturally, that changed the world afterwards. They always talk about post-1492 and about how that changed everything in history, uh, especially in the new world, you know, uh, what occurred. Uh, and uh, Crosby coined the term, and it became a popular term. It's now you know, used widely, you know, today uh, overall. And so all this stuff got transferred back and forth between the old and the new worlds, you know, plants, animals, diseases, um, ideas, people, you know, and so on. Um, so uh, all this interaction back and forth uh, was a process that changed everything. Uh, and, uh, of course, and on the negative side we already talked about, of course, was the fact that the Native American Indians, you know, uh, were, you know, devastated by uh, the Columbia Exchange. Yeah, it set up trade routes, too. Like, I think uh, they say the Columbia Exchange, I guess, led eventually to the triangular trade route, which will develop later, not now, uh, when they get more into Africa. Uh, but that'll be another thing that'll kind of develop out of it uh, as well. Do you got a, a map showing you all the things that were exchanged back and forth? So from the old war, world, they brought over things like livestock. So the new world didn't have any things like cows and sheep and pigs and horses, all that was brought to, of course, the Americas. Uh, all the kind of grains that we have, they grow over here, like wheat and barley and so on, rice, all came from the old world. A lot of your fruits, you know, like peaches, oranges, apples, pears, uh, those all came from the old world. Uh, coffee, um, you see bananas, grapes, turnips, olives, onions, citrus fruits, Sugar cane, uh, honeybees, it says there too, uh, also. So all that came from, of course, uh, the old world. Yeah, a lot of diseases, you know, a lot of European, smallpox, probably and measles were the big ones that came over. But you can see influenza, typhus, malaria, whooping cough, diphtheria, pretty much just goes on like a list. Uh, and, of course, that would end up, you know, killing a lot of Native Americans. Uh, then you can see all the stuff in the New World that came over, sweet potatoes, peppers like red pepper and so on, squash, pumpkin, turkey, peanuts, pineapple, chocolate, uh, vanilla beans, different kinds of beans, corn, like maize corn, tomatoes, potatoes, 
really these ones up here are the big ones, potatoes, tomatoes, and corn. I think are the big ones, peanuts, uh, you know, all that. So that's lots a lot of the crops that came from, you know, the new world that went to the old world uh, overall. They had some diseases, but I don't think they, I think there's a claim that um, was some of the venereal diseases may have come over like syphilis has been speculated. I don't know if that's really true or not. It's kind of a debate about that one, about where that one came over from the new world, but it may have. So quite possible. So all this stuff was exchanged back and forth. That had a different, had an impact on the world, you know, overall after 1492. Just think about it. You wouldn't be able to have French fries at McDonald's or pizza, you know, with, you know, red sauce on it. You know, if it wasn't for uh, no popcorn, you know, <laughs> you know, no peanuts in your M&Ms. <laughs> think of all this. No turkey for Thanksgiving, you know, uh, you know, pumpkins for Halloween. Just think of all these different things they have now. So anyway. Uh, then, of course, uh, of course, Americo Vespucci. Uh, I need to talk a little bit about him as well. Uh, of course, Americo, you know, he's the reason why they got they you start using the name America uh, for the New World or the Americas. Uh, who was America Vespucci? He was an Italian explorer that came, was kind of the same time period as Columbus was. And he sailed for Spain and Portugal. Uh, and um, he was involved in a couple expeditions himself, which I've got a map showing you that, which took place, they think, close to 1500 and maybe in the early 1500s. Uh, kind of a, There might have been two or three voyages that he had. But he explored the Carib Caribbean. He also explored South America. And uh, he may have been one of the first to explore South America up there with Pedro Cabral, so those two guys right there. And um, Americo, um, he uh, basically figured out that Columbus, what Columbus had done on his expeditions proved to be false. If you know about Columbus, Columbus thought he was close to Asia, um, like close to the Indies and all that. But what America Vespucci figured out was that this whole area that, that Columbus had been exploring was new continents, totally separate. Uh, from the old world. And so uh, what happened was, if you know about this, uh, there was a letter that was circulated in the early 1500s, which was sometimes called the Mundos Nuvos letter. Started writing to people about this. And Mundos Nuvos was a Latin term he coined, which meant new world. And so a lot of people started using that term for the Americas later, the new world. Then by the 1500s, 16th century, people started using the term America uh, to describe uh, the new world. And it was, of course, named for his name, America Vespucci. Of course, there's the Latin name, Americus Vespucius. So, um, so that's where America gets its name. United States of America, you know, originally it was named after his Latin, I guess, first name. So interesting about that, how that came about. So uh, anyway, so we're kind of talking about Columbus's voyages and their aftermath. Uh, and so because of like all these, you know, expeditions going back and forth, you know, between the old and the new world, that eventually what's going to happen is that there's, they're going to continue more exploration of the new world, et cetera. And also that's going to lead into colonization, conquest of the new world, which we'll get to that later about that. Now, there was also Ferdinand Magellan. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of Magellan. He's a very famous uh, explorer that's well known. Uh, uh, I think he might be the second most famous explorer after Columbus in the early part of the Age of Discovery. And um, here's a better slide on information about Magellan. Magellan was a Portuguese explorer, okay, but he sailed for Spain later, which made it more famous, although he was involved in some expeditions uh, that went to like the Indian Ocean. So he had already explored the Indian Ocean uh, previously in the early 1500s. And uh, Magellan had this idea to continue the um, expeditions of Columbus to try to see if they could find a westward route uh, to reach uh, to the Indies and the Spice Islands. Uh, which were, by the way, also called the Malukas. Malukas is the actual name 
that they call the Spice Islands today, uh, which are still there. And um, so he uh, first went to Portugal, and the Portuguese didn't want to do it because they were going around Africa at the time, reaching India, and they thought that was the proper way to go to get to India and the Spice Islands and all that. And then the Spanish thought they could take advantage of a westward route and try to reach maybe some territory where the, the Portuguese weren't at. Uh, and so Spain agreed to the expedition. And uh, sometimes the expedition had a nickname. I'll give it to you. I'll put it on the board on the uh, screen here. But it was called sometimes the um, uh, Expedition of the Malukas is what people called it, the actual expedition. And the main goal of it, if you know about that, of the uh, <clears throat> the Jalons expedition was to uh, reach the Spice Islands, like a westward route and then come back uh, and go back eastward. Uh, however, you know about, um, about uh, Magellan, he was known uh, for um, being the first explorer uh, to circumnavigate the world. That's eventually what he became known for. Although if you know what happened, he was killed halfway around the world and never completed it. Uh, and, um, but he's given credit for it because it was, you know, his expedition, uh, and all that. So, um, eventually he had five ships involved with the expedition. Uh, the crew was about, eh, they're not sure exactly how many went, went with him. I think 260 something men got 265. That may have been right. I think they had some stowaways on, with, on board, which would sometimes happen. So it may have been more than that. Those are the five ships that, that, that were involved in Magellan's voyage. You had the Victoria, which is the most famous one. The Victoria was the ship that um, survived the expedition, which is right here, kind of a replica of it. Called also the Gnaw uh, Victoria. It was a Gnaw, which is like what they call it, Karak. It was a Karak ship I talked about earlier. Um, Conception, uh, the Trinidad of San Antonio and the Santiago. Yeah, those are the five ships uh, that were involved. What happened to all the ships, uh, which I'll get to later, um, some, they don't all make it. Uh, in fact, only one makes it around the world, and uh, most of the ships are destroyed overall. Uh, what ends up happening is um, I've got a map showing you the route of Magellan. Magellan takes a route uh, which goes around South America. So he sails down to the South Atlantic, down to where the Cape Horn is on the bottom of South America. I think I have another slide that was right here, which also has more information if you want to look at that, uh, which is right. I'll come back to that later maybe. But um, if you go to um, this map here, you can see that's where the Strait of Magellan is. It's actually located on the bottom of South America. Cape Horn's down here, which is the bottom of South America. Strait of Magellan's right here. So he sailed right through here. So that's basically the strait that bears his name now. And then from there, he was able to sail outward uh, into the Pacific Ocean that's over here. Uh, he did lose a ship um, off the coast of um, uh, South America, which uh, I believe that one he lost was the um, Santiago. He had shipwrecked. Uh, off the coast of Argentina. So that ship was gone. And then there was another ship, the San Antonio, if you know much about that one. That one mutinied. They actually, the men went back to Spain. They didn't want to continue the voyage. I think they were scared. They, they went back. And so what, by the time he sailed into the uh, Atlantic Ocean, which I guess was in 15, I think 2021, he only had three ships left, uh, basically. Uh, Magellan also is the one that coined the name Pacific Ocean. So he called it Paci Mar Pacifico, Mar Pacifico, uh, which meant a uh, peaceful sea or calm sea. It's actually what it means. So peaceful or calm ocean is what it means, I guess, now. And uh, But he wasn't the first Spanish to see it. I'll get to that later. Vasco de Bal Balboa uh, discovered it before he did, around 1513. We'll talk about Balboa later. He was a conquistador. 
So he sailed through the uh, Pacific Ocean. Uh, he um, we really have a good map showing you like all the areas he explored. But uh, besides the Philippines, uh, Magellan is the one that discovered the island of Guam. You know, you heard of Guam? The Guam is an island I think that's close to the Marianas Islands. Found that, uh, but um, a lot of the islands were inhabited, or they had uh, Native Americans that were hot. Well, they had natives that were hostile. Uh, to his men. Some of his men got killed uh, by natives, and some were cannibals. I think there was some where they killed them and they ate them. Uh, then some some of his men died of scur scurvy. You know what scurvy is. Uh, and lack of water and food. Uh, so it was a very big struggle, struggle uh, to cross the um, specific ocean. And uh, the um, the um, he had to burn one of his ships after that. Yeah, I told you about the Santiago. It was shipwrecked off the close to South America. Conception was the other ship. He burned that one. And so he only had two ships left, which were the Trinidad and the Victoria. And then from there, he sailed and reached the Philippines around the spring of 1521. And uh, on the island of Mactan, M-A-C-T-A-N, Mactan, he was killed uh, by by uh, native Filipinos uh, who got in a kind of a war with them. And uh, Magellan um, was not very well liked by the Filipinos uh, because I think he tried to force the Catholic religion on them. And some of the mutinied, and he was killed in a battle called the Battle of Mac Tan, I think they dub it, you see on April 27, 1521. What happened was from there, the voyage was taken over by this uh, captain of theirs who was a Basque sailor named Sebastian Del Cano. He took them basically to the Spice Islands. So they eventually reached the Spice Islands after that in 1521. And um, what happened in the Spice Islands, which are like right in this area here, down here, they both loaded up on spices at that point. And they couldn't agree on uh, how they were going to get back to Spain. Uh, the, the captain of Trinidad wanted to go back the way Magellan came. So he started sailing this way, like the back way they came. And I guess they were going to go back this way. They got lost in the Pacific. And the Portuguese uh, discovered them and seized their ship. So Trinidad never made it back. Uh, and then El Cano, who I told you about, then took the Victoria back to uh, Spain around Africa. They were they came back in 1522. So it took them about three years uh, for them to get back, you know, on the uh, Naw Victoria. And I think they say only 18 men survived the whole expedition, like to go around the world. So the rest either got killed, they got captured by the uh, Portuguese or some mutinied uh, as well. And so, yeah, it was very difficult, uh, this first circumnavigation of the world, which there's been many of those that have happened in history. Uh, and um, But what the Spanish figured out about this expedition of Magellan was that basically um, you could, you know, circle the world. The world was much larger than what it was. It was a huge ocean that was between the old and the new worlds. So they discovered a lot of things about the world uh, that that basically um, have been, you know, part of like um, like legends or stories uh, that have now been disproved, you know. So because a lot of people thought the world was flat or um, Asia was very close to the Americas, they find out that that's all, you know, not true. I think some people think there were sea monsters everywhere and uh, that stuff is kind of starting to be kind of, disproved also as well. So, but, but Magellan is still given credit, you know, for this whole, you know, um, voyage. Uh, of course, yeah, he, the Philippines is something he discovered that's real famous. Uh, if you know about that, you know, he introduced Christianity uh, to the Philippines. That was the original name he was going to call it, but they named it after the crown prince of Spain, Prince Philip, uh, later Philip II. That's where the name Philippines comes from originally. 
So that's the story of Magellan. You know, the, really Magellan and Columbus are the two greatest, you know, explorers uh, at the beginning of the whole um, period of exploration as a whole. All right, we got a few minutes. I can also, I guess, talk about the other explorers real quick. Oops, uh, that um, are big as well uh, with exploration. And um, yeah, here's kind of a map of the world. You know, all these different explorers that are going all over the place that you can see, you know, from, you know, the Americas uh, with the uh, explorers and conquistadors. You got explorers, you know, going around Africa to Asia. Later, you're going to have even uh, expeditions to discover Australia uh, and all that, uh, Greenland, eventually, you know, Antarctica down here as well. But eventually, by the 17th, 18th uh, centuries, most of the world gets discovered uh, as a whole. Uh, some other explorers I can go through real quick and talk about. Uh, after Columbus's uh, voyage, um, you had uh, John Cabot uh, was a big explorer that came in. He was actually Italian. His real name was um, Giovanni Caboto, usually spelled C-A-B-O-T-O. He was an Italian explorer that, uh, that Henry the, the VII of England uh, hired uh, to explore and uh, Henry the Seventh had been very interested in Columbus, Columbus in his voyages. I think he wanted to hire Columbus originally, and um, you know the English thought you could sail westward to Asia too, and so Cabot was hired. He went on like two voyages, uh, and he sailed in 1497 to the west, and uh, he eventually discovered Newfoundland, uh, which is off the coast of East. Um, Eastern Canada, Labrador Island, I think, and Cape Britain Island, which um, is part of the Nova Scotia, they think, as well. And that would be very important because that would lead to English claims to that part of Canada, which they'll eventually colonize uh, later. And uh, so really, Cabot is really the first modern explorer to discover part of North America uh, in what would be Canada they do think he was searching for the Northwest Passage, which does exist, by the way, above Canada, but it's just difficult to sail through there. Uh, and um, Cabot had a son named Sebastian. I don't know if you know about that, too. But Sebastian would come back later uh, and involve in some expeditions. I don't know if they show. Yeah, there it is. You got Cabot over here, exploring over here. Then his son, Sebastian, would actually explore what is actually close to where like the New England area, like Maine in that area, like from, I think from Maine down to maybe where Massachusetts, he may have explored, they think as well. So, so he's really the first real explorer that, you know, since the Vikings that comes in and actually begins exploring that area uh, in North America. Uh, then they had Henry Hudson as well. Kind of add some new slides. Just check those out. I added, uh, in the PowerPoint uh, in Canvas. But Hudson, Henry Hudson, who was an English explorer, um, actually uh, explored for the um, Dutch East India Company. He was hired by them. Uh, and if you know much about uh, Henry Hudson, uh, he was also trying to find the Northwest Passage as well. Uh, and... Um, he went on like two or three expeditions. I think at least may have been three expeditions at one point. They say Hudson, the two main ones I have here on the in the map there. And Hudson um, was famous for uh, discovering uh, certain parts of of the um, of the of the New World in North America. He found uh, Chesapeake Bay, you know, close to where uh, Maryland is. Uh, he also discovered Delaware Bay. As well, he found the Hudson River Valley, uh, which is where New York is. He actually sailed up Hudson River. Uh, that's mostly on one of his expeditions you see in 1609 to 1610. Then on a sec, another voyage uh, to England from England, he um, tried to explore Upper Canada, and he found what they call Hudson Bay and the Hudson Strait that runs into it. Uh, in Upper Canada, and he thought that may have been part of the Northwest Passage too, but uh, his men, you know about it, mutinied against him uh, around 1611.
they left him up there with some of his crew. And so Hudson was believed to have died somewhere in Canada. And there's a big mystery about Hudson, but they later found a rock with his name, they think, written on, or some kind of initials written on a rock. Um, I think say an HH, and I forget what year it's written, but they think he may have been captured by Indians and maybe enslaved, a uh, possibility. So that was Hudson. Uh, Hudson, of course, had a famous ship called the Half Moon. It's a replica of what you're seeing right here that sailed to the New World. Uh, the Dutch did get a claim to the area, especially around where the Hudson River Valley is, like around New York. So the Dutch would actually colonize that area for a while until England came in and took it from them. But England would take claim to parts of that area in the Northeast and, and also Canada because of Hudson. <clears throat> uh, then they have another explorer who was big, you may have heard of, named James Cook. He was a British explorer who was later in the 1700s. And Cook uh, is very famed for uh, exploring the Pacific Ocean. Um, he's really considered one of the greatest uh, British explorers of all time. Uh, he's known for his circumnavigation of the world two times, which is pretty amazing. Uh, he's famous for his ships, HMS Endeavor, uh, the HMS Discovery, uh, if you know, which um, were later uh, ships that got the names for the space shuttles. You know, the, the space shuttles that NASA had were named after those ships uh, later. Uh, Cook is known for exploring and mapping uh, the Pacific Ocean. Uh, he first discovered the eastern side of uh, Australia <clears throat> originally. If you know about Cook, Cook's the one that found the Great Barrier Reef just off the coast of Australia. <laughs> Actually ran a ship into it, like ran aground on it and had to back off. Uh, he also um, circumnavigated New Zealand and discovered that New Zealand was made up of mostly two large islands, and he mapped them too as well. He also helped colonize Australia too, if you know about that. He actually left some men uh, to try to colonize where Sydney, Australia is, <clears throat> Botany Bay. And so that would get the English, the British later, to come back and try to you know, colonize Australia. And by the um, 19th century, that's what happens. Uh, also on his, I think one of his first voyages, he found Tahiti. Uh, if you know about that famous island in the South Pacific, um, he found the Polynesian Islands a lot in the South Pacific, which a lot of them he named or mapped. Uh, he did explore the Arctic Circle. He was one of the first to do that, like above Canada. Uh, he did that because he was trying to find the Northwest Passage, which I guess was there, but I don't think he was able to get, I, I think he did sail through it. He sailed through it and and then he found Hawaii also as well, um, one of his last expeditions. Oh, and Cook also explored where the Bering Sea is in Alaska. So the guy was everywhere, uh, Cook. And, of course, everybody calls him now Captain Cook, uh, you know. Uh, then the French had some explorers too real quick. Uh, Jacques Cartier was another explorer and navigator uh, who went on like three expeditions to the New World. Uh, for uh, the King Francis I, who was also interested in trying to find a westward or north northwest passage as well to Asia. And um, Cartier in the 1530s discovered the St. Lawrence River Valley, which is right here. You got a map here, and uh, you can see he came down into uh, where <coughs> Newfoundland is and the Gulf of St. Lawrence and then sailed down to where close to uh, Quebec is in Montreal, up in this area. And um, Cartier was the one that uh, was one of the first Frenchmen to make contact with the Native Americans, like the Iroquois, uh, Huron, and other types of natives that were there in Canada. And um, there's a story where he was exploring on land uh, near the St. Lawrence River Basin, and he got lost. And he asked for directions on where the nearest um, Indian village was or settlement. And an Indian told him Kanata, which was, I guess he pointed one to say it's that way. You know, Kanata is that way, that, that village. And um, the word Kanata is where they get the word Canada from, uh, of course. But, you know, this, the 
French don't call it that. Uh, the French later refer to it as New France, is what they'll eventually call it. And the French will come back later. Uh, Cartier tried to colonize it initially, but it failed. But it won't be colonized until uh, Samuel de Champlain comes back uh, in the early 1600s. So that's the other guy that was real famous, Samuel de Champlain, of course. Uh, who was he? Uh, he was a French explorer. He was also a soldier. Uh, he was a governor of, uh, of course, of what would be New France and Canada. And uh, Champlain was famous for his expeditions uh, to explore uh, Canada. And I've got a map showing you all the different expeditions of Champlain. Uh, you can see how he uh, also um, explored like um, the St. Lawrence River Valley where Cartier had come down in the 1500s. Uh, he did explore like parts of Western Canada here, uh, which would be, I guess, Ontario. Uh, he did discover some of the early Great Lakes. He found uh, Lake Ontario and he found Lake Huron. So he did find two of the early five Great Lakes. He found also Lake Champlain, which is up in uh, upstate New York, up in here, Lake Champlain. He found that. He also explored the uh, New England area uh, from Massachusetts and Maine here. Because I remember when I was in Maine a few years ago, they talked about that. Uh, he may have landed where Bar Harbor, Harbor is up in Maine. Also, Nova Scotia he may have explored here. So pretty much all this area of New England and Eastern Canada was explored by Champlain. And then, of course, this big thing he did, if you know about it, was he uh, created the first French colony uh, in uh, what is now Quebec. Uh, and he founded the city of Quebec uh, in uh, 1608 on the St. Lawrence River, on the bluffs there, which you can see here, the famous uh, tall green building there at the top. And... Um, Later, he got a nickname, uh, you know about it. Uh, Champlain was referred to as the father of New France, as they dubbed him. Uh, there's even a statue of him that kind of sits over the bluff, because I've been to Quebec a few times, the city. And um, he would be like the first governor appointed by the French Bourbons, uh, who, that, who ruled France at the time, the Bourbon dynasty. So that's Champlain and why he's important, so-called father of New France, the French colony that they set up in Canada. Uh, then there's another explorer. I'll ask when I'll talk about the French. La Salle is another one you may have heard of. He was a French explorer. Very, very we we know him in Louisiana because there's a lot of schools named after him, La Salle and Streets and all that. Rene Robert Cavalier Sud La Salle, of course, his full name. Uh, was a French explorer in the 17th century. Uh, if you know about him, La Salle was sent by Louis the Fourteenth, the King of France, the Bourbon King, uh, to explore Canada and discover, like the Mississippi, explore the Mississippi River. And uh, he was one of the first to explore most of the Mississippi River, especially from like the central part of it down to where the Gulf of Mexico is. I've got a map showing you like his voyages. He had like two different voyages. There was one where he came down the what is the Ohio River is. So he, he was one of the first Europeans to explore the Ohio River Valley right here. He also explored the Great Lakes, like Lake Superior, so on. Actually, that's Lake Michigan right here. Lake Michigan uh, as well. Uh, Lake Huron uh, right here. Lake Erie uh, and Lake Ontario. That's, yeah, Lake Erie, Lake Ontario, Huron, Lake Michigan. He came through the Illinois River. That was his path. And he came down the river here using dugout canoes. Um, anyway, 1682, that's when he eventually reached the mouth of the Mississippi River. If you know about it, he claimed the whole Louisiana and the Mississippi River Valley for France and Louis XIV. And so the French would use that to try and colonize it, which Louisiana would be part of New France. Uh, as a colony, and uh, he named it after Louis the Fourteenth. So that's that's where Louisiana gets its name. Uh, I think there's a legend that he named it after Louis and his wife Anne, but it's actually not. Uh, Louisiana means the land of Louis or Louis's land, uh, basically, or Louis's country. Um, and um, so, so La Salle was the first one to explore the Mississippi River, like the whole, most of the length. Uh, although there were some before 
may have heard of like um, the two explorers, which were Juliet and Marquette. They had actually explored the upper part of it before uh, La Salle in the 1670s, and they kind of paved the way for La Salle to eventually explore the whole entire thing on the bottom. Uh, La Salle tried to come back uh, like on a third voyage. He was trying to find like in 1680s, like a way to find the um, the Mississippi River from the Gulf of Mexico, which was right here. But he got lost, and he ended up in Texas, and his men mutinied against him, and they killed him. They shot him, and he died in Texas in 1687. So kind of a tragic figure, LaSalle, what happened to him. But he's the guy that discovered a good bit of the Mississippi River and claimed it for Louisiana and for France. One more explorer I'll give you real quick, too, that was famous. Uh, was also Vitus Bering uh, in the 18th century. Uh, Bering was a Danish explorer uh, who explored uh, what is um, Siberia in the uh, uh, in the uh, Bering Sea uh, for the Russians. Uh, the Russians were very interested in what was beyond Siberia because at the time in the 18th century, the Russians were getting ready to colonize um, Siberia and all that. And uh, the ruler at the time in uh, Russia, her name was Empress Elizabeth, sent explorers eastward. So they hired this guy, Vitus Bering, because uh, I don't think the Russians knew much about exploring and all that. And mostly the people in the Western Europe knew about sailing and all that a lot. And so um, there's a map here, I believe I have sh um, showing, that's not it right there. I think it's on the bottom, which is right there. Uh, there's a map here showing uh, Vitus Bering's um, expeditions. He first explored uh, the Kamchatka Peninsula here, which is right here in Siberia. He found that he explored the Bering Sea, uh, and then a second voyage, you can see here, uh, he um, explored Alaska. Uh, they believe he may have come up into where Seward is, since on Alaska. They do think he may have, not him, maybe some of his men may have also discovered the Yukon River and may have even sailed up it a little bit, see what was there. They also found the Aleutian Islands, and there's an island around here called Bering Island, now they called it, where he eventually died. Actually, no, no, Bering Island's right here. I'm sorry, not up in here. Over here is where it is, Bering, near Russia, excuse me, named for him today. I thought it was over here for some reason. I don't know why, but um, Bering Island um, is where he, um, the exhibition ended and he died. So he didn't finish the whole thing. But, of course, the Bering Sea and the Bering Strait, you know, got named after him. Uh, right here, and uh, that would open up basically Russian colonization um, uh, into Alaska. And so um, later on, I think under Catherine the Great, they'll start expanding into Russia. The Russians will come back. We even found cities there. Like you heard of Sitka, Sitka, Alaska was originally a Russian city that the Russians founded. Uh, and so the Russians will control uh, Alaska until the 1860s until they sold it to the United States. Uh, the Russians, by the way, called him Ivan Ivanovich. Well, that's what they called him. But the Dutch called, the, yeah, the Danish called him uh, Vitus Berry. So that's pretty much it for uh, questions about that. Um, let me go through and uh, I guess we, do we have time to review? I guess we do. Got, I've got, well, I don't know if I got time to do it. Y'all want to go ahead and review real quick or do y'all want to? Do that another time. It's up to you what you want to do. It's kind of getting a long lecture here uh, for today. Do y'all want, want to go ahead and review? I don't know if you I want to. Mind. Okay, okay. I'll go ahead and review real quick here. I'll just go through it real quick. If y'all want to send me any questions. I would just, like to. Okay. okay, that's fine. Let's go ahead and mute it. Uh, send me, send me some questions if you have any about the uh, lecture. I have a right. few that I have right now. Okay, we'll just... Give them to me in the chat. Oh, that's fine. I'll try to answer them. Uh, anyway, um, let me go ahead and review real quick. So Christopher Columbus, who was he? Uh, Columbus was, of course, the Italian explorer uh, who, of course, discovered uh, the Americas uh, under the Spanish. Uh, and, of course, he was the one that found mostly the Bahamas and the Caribbean 
Uh, he was, of course, the first European explorer to find America since the Vikings. Uh, of course, the um, Native Americans were already there. Uh, what are some major events of this first voyage uh, enterprise of the Indies? Well, um, Columbus, um, of course, had several ships that were famous. Uh, the Nina, the Penta, and the Santa Maria, uh, of course, that went on the expedition. His expedition, of course, uh, sailed from 1492 to 93. The first voyage was, of course, the one that discovered uh, the New World at the time. And it's believed that Columbus discovered um, what is the um, Bahamas on October 12, 1492. And I told you the name of the island that he found was called San Salvador. That's what they call it now. Uh, but the natives had another name for it, if you know about this, which was called Guanahani, uh, which you saw on the screen previously. Uh, from there, uh, he then explored, I told you, uh, Cuba. He found Cuba in 1492. He also found Hispaniola, where Haiti and the um, Dominican Republic is. He also found pretty much a lot of the other islands that are also in the Pacific also as well. Um, now, I told you how um, he tried to set a settlement there, but it failed by Navidad and in Santo Domingo. Uh, wouldn't be really a successful colony, a city, until 1496. Uh, then I talked about the Columbian Exchange. Uh, Columbian Exchange was this where um, everything was exchanged between the old and new worlds, whether it be people, uh, plants, animal, culture, diseases. Uh, and I gave you a bunch of examples of different things that were exchanged back and forth between the old and the new world. Uh, it was coined by Af Alfred C uh, Crosby. He wrote a book about it in 1972, and, and the name became popular, and they still use it today. Um, yeah, I'll probably just go back and look at the different things that were exchanged. But uh, anything from plants like fruit, you know, and typical types of grain, uh, cattle, all came from the old world. New world had all these new things that we have now, like peanuts, sweet potatoes, corn, um, tomatoes, um, potatoes. Yeah, potatoes and um, what was the other thing I had that was big? Beans and all that, squash, um, and so on. It's a bunch of stuff I gave you already. Uh, Marigo Vespucci, of course, was the Italian explorer for the Spanish and also Portuguese. He was one of the first to realize that uh, Columbus had discovered basically uh, a new world, Mundos Nubos. Uh, new new continents, and so he influenced um, map makers later to uh, call it the New World or the Americas. Uh, and so the name America or the name Americas uh, that became the name that they start using uh, for the new continents that they found, like North America and South America. So so I guess Columbus got the shaft on that. It wasn't named after him. Uh, Tree of Tordesillas, 1494, was a peace treaty between Spain and Portugal that carved up the discoveries of Spain and Portugal. Spain got most of the New World, and Portugal got most of the Old World. Uh, but I told you how Portugal snuck in, and they took Brazil uh, because of Pedro Cabral in 1500. Uh, who was Ferdinand Magellan? Magellan, of course, was a uh, Portuguese explorer that sailed with the Spanish he was involved in an expedition to sail around the world. Um, his, his expedition, yeah, that's what it was for. It was famous for its uh, circumnavigation of the world between 1519 to 1522. Um, what was its original goal? Its original goal was actually to find a westward passage to try to reach, reach the Spice Islands, which are called the Moluccas uh, near Indonesia, because the uh, Spanish wanted to, get, wanted to get part of the spice trade. Uh, they figured out it was a longer route to go westward uh, around South America. Uh, what ship survived the expedition of the five original ships? The, uh, the Victoria. That was the only one that survived with 18 men. They sailed back around Africa to Spain, coming back in 1522. Uh, what other areas of the world did Magellan explore? I uh, explored the um, South America, like the bottom of it, uh, the the, uh, the area where the Strait of Magellan is, Pacific Ocean. He discovered like islands like Guam, 
like in the uh, Marianas. He discovered the Philippines as an example. Uh, and then um, also, I guess, uh, Elcano brought him back, you know, Sebastian Elcano. Uh, he, of course, explored the Indian Ocean. Yeah, who brought him back? Uh, that was, of course, uh, Juan Sebastian Elcano, who was like a Basque Spanish explorer. He brought them back from the, the Spice Islands to uh, Spain. Uh, who are these other explorers? I told you Cabot was an Italian explorer. It's actually called Giovanni Caboto. And Caboto or Cabot was the one that explored, one of the first Europeans to explore Canada and North America uh, in the modern times. And he found like um, Eastern Canada, like around Newfoundland and Nova Scotia. Henry Hudson was an English explorer for the Dutch, like the East India Dutch Company. And um, and he explored like um, East Coast of the United States, where I told you the, the Chesapeake Bay, uh, Delaware Bay, Hudson River Valley. He also explored uh, Upper Canada, where they found like the Hudson Strait and, and what is uh, Hudson Bay. And he was one that was mutinied and died up there somewhere in Canada. James Cook was a 18th century British explorer known for his expeditions in the Pacific Ocean. He also circumnavigated the world twice uh, by ship. Cook was the one that discovered part of Australia. He also discovered like the Great Barrier Reef, uh, New Zealand, Tahiti, uh, the Polynesian Islands, Hawaii. He explored Alaska. He explored the Arctic Ocean or Arctic Sea. Arctic Ocean, I guess they called it. And uh, so Cook was a great explorer and mapped a lot of it. Jacques Cartier was a French explorer in the 16, 16th century. Uh, 1530s, he's the one who, of course, discovered part of eastern Canada, and he found the St. Lawrence River Valley. And uh, Cartier is the one that would, of course, coin the name Canada. So he called it Canada, and it stuck. Samuel Champlain, of course, was a French explorer, also governor of Canada. Champlain was known for his expeditions uh, exploring what is the Great Lakes, part of Canada, like around like Ontario and Quebec. Uh, he also explored like uh, up into upstate New York and Vermont, uh, where uh, like Lake Champlain is. Also just explored New England, like around Massachusetts and Maine as well. Uh, Champlain also was the one who founded Quebec, like the city, uh, which became the capital of what they called New France. And New France became the French colony in Canada and also part of Louisiana later. Uh, Champlain was the first governor of New France. And he was later nicknamed, of course, I told you earlier, the father of New France. Robert LaSalle, of course, was a French explorer for Louis XIV. He's the one to explore the Ohio River Valley, but became more famous for, of course, exploring the Mississippi River. 1682, he was the one that found the mouth of the Mississippi River, exploring the length of it. And he, of course, claimed Louisiana and the Mississippi River and its tributaries for France. And it got named after Louis XIV. And so it was called Louisiana later. Or well, he was later killed on a second expedition too, 1687 in Texas, though. Uh, Vitus Bering, of course, was a, a Danish explorer for the Russians under Empress Elizabeth. And um, Bering was the one that explored like Siberia and the Bering Sea. Uh, and uh, he also found the Bering Strait. And then he explored part of Alaska and the Aleutian Islands. And um, they think he, some of his men may have also discovered the Yukon River. So Bering's important because Bearings where the Russians come in and colonize, of course, Russia. All right, so that's it for my lecture today. Um, now, um, does anybody have any questions for me? Nobody. Oh, we got, see, I got two of here. Uh, let's see. We got Emily's got one here. Uh, what made cities? Uh, what what countries made up Spain? Is that what you're asking? I guess. Well, they had different countries they had in Spain. Oh, well, different cities. Uh, oh, well, of course, you know, Barcelona is one of the big ones. Valencia, you heard of Valencia? Valencia was a big, like one of their capitals, I think, at the time. 
uh, that was big in Spain. Uh, but this, the actual kingdoms were uh, the two main ones were Castile and Aragon. If you want me to put that on the screen for you real quick here, Castile and Aragon. And uh, those are the two main um, ones. Um, you put it on the screen here so you can see it as well. But uh, Castile and Aragon are the ones you're talking about. Uh, and uh, those two, um, Castile, uh, those two, like though, and some other ones, but Basque area, I think, and other parts of Spain will combine later to become what they call the Spains, the Spanish Empire. And that'll be what they call Spain later. So Spain was a collection of states. It wasn't one. Uh, most people don't know that about at the time. Uh, who gave Columbus the ships? Uh, they did. The Spanish crown of Castile gave him the ships. Uh, they gave him so much money. I think they gave like 10% of the profits, Columbus, uh, whatever. They gave him some money and 10%, I know, of the profits on the voy first voyage, basically. And uh, he, they also gave him a title, which was uh, Admiral of the Ocean Sea as well. <laughs> And uh, I guess considered the first major admiral in modern times. Uh, Spice Islands are called the Malukas today, which if you want to know that one, I can put it on the screen. The Malukas. Um, I forget how they spell it. I think it's spelled like that, I believe. But that's the name that they call the Malukas today. A lot of people still call them Spice Islands. A lot of spices come there still, I think. Nutmeg, cinnamon, pepper, uh, and all that. Uh, as well. I think that's how they spell it, Malukas. So any other questions? Uh, anybody's got any more? But, you know, you can always ask me, of course, on YouTube. You know, you can, like I said, you get com, you get uh, points, bonus points for sending me comments, questions through YouTube. You know, send me basic comments like, you know, about the lecture, if you liked it or not. Uh, any things you might, might want me to do better or whatever, include with the lecture. Can't cover everything I know on this because there's so many things that happen uh, with world exploration. But just send me comments, uh, questions later uh, about uh, the lecture uh, overall. Uh, and uh, before we go, um, you know, um, just a reminder, don't forget uh, about the uh, Canvas quiz number one on the Reformation due um, Tuesday next week. I'll try to send out reminders about it. Um, I, I pro we probably won't meet till Tuesday next week, so I'll try to send you emails about it to try to try to complete it. But a bunch of people still haven't done it yet, so try to get that done uh, for me. I don't think I've got anything else right now uh, to talk about. But uh, next week on Tuesday, I'll move on to talk about the uh, conquest of America. Main thing I will be doing, of course, is I'll I'll be talking about the conquistadors uh, that are very famous. You know, like Pizarro and Cortez, you may have heard of them. Uh, and uh, I probably will have some kind of video um, assignment coming up, which I might give you early on Monday. Uh, but the actual Canvas quiz, I think, on, on exploration, I probably won't give it to you till Tuesday next week. because so i got to wait and see what you do at the first Canvas quiz on the Reformation. So if anybody else has any questions, you know, just send me messages through YouTube, uh, comments, questions about the lecture today. Uh, if there's other ones before, you can send me stuff, you know, other lectures is fine through that one. But uh, just a reminder too, don't forget, send me book report titles you want for your paper, you decide on that. And if anybody's interested in the Veterans Project, let me know. So that's it for today. I uh, hope you all have a good rest of the day uh, and good weekend coming up. Uh, happy Labor Day, I guess, coming up. Um, and um, I, I like, um, you know, I hope you all have a good weekend. So I'll give a little, it looks like Alexander's got a comment too. Yeah, like that way I review at the end. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of a good idea, isn't it, every time. So I try to review after each lecture, and that way we don't do it at the end. It's too much. So, so you all have a good weekend. So take care.